Hello everyone, I am joined by Maria Konnikova. I have been loving researching you. You have so many interesting projects and things going on. Now, you talked to Laura at EPT Monte Carlo, or Poker Stars Championship now, Monte Carlo, earlier this year, and this was sort of the start of your adventure mm -hmm. in this project looking at poker and sort of the difference between poker and life, the similarities between the poker and life in looking at chance and Arias also and sort of the things you can't control and skill. Super, and super cool project. But before strike, we get into so that, I didn't know that you had a podcast, which I just discovered. And this podcast looks amazing to me. Obviously, you know, must be inspired by your confidence book. So talk to me a little bit about that project and tell us a few of the sort of interesting bits. I literally downloaded every single episode. It looks so cool. <laughs> so the podcast is called The Grift, okay, and it's about con artists, so four the people minutes. who kind of take advantage of you, who are so confident that they can take advantage of your confidence. I've met a few at the poker tables, but uh, there have been so many interesting people I've met. One of them was actually a uh, card shark who cheated at poker. Um, and he's now in his 80s, and over his life, I think he's made millions of dollars. It's kind of, it's kind of phenomenal. Um, and because he was so old, he also lied about, you know, like knowing Doyle Brunson, so that people um, thought that he was actually like tr went up the ranks with him. And so he's actually that good. He's not cheating. It was just, it's the funniest story in the world. And there are a lot of characters like that um, in the podcast and in the book. I, some of those stories, and it's funny because some of them seem relatively, you know, not the worst things ever. Right. And then some of them are, you know, starting cults. And yeah. be, I mean, it's. Yeah, they're also the cult leaders. Those are much worse. So <laughs> interesting to me. I'm obsessed, of course, with like murder podcasts and things. So this is just <laughs> right up my alley. But I think something about this project that you're working on right now, when I looked at the, you know, focus of your first two books, those two things seem to sort of seamlessly transition into poker. But this was something that came more or less out of the blue for you. Poker was not something that ever had anything to do with any of the things. So talk to me a little bit about how the experience has been and sort of with all of your background, what the last few months have been like for you in this progress. Um, the last few months have been some of the most fascinating in my life, to be perfectly honest. Um, this is such an immersive project where I'm really playing full time. So I'm, you know, I say I'm a writer moonlighting as a professional poker player. <laughs> um, and this world, the more I get into it, the more fascinating it becomes. At the beginning, I thought, you know, this is a pretty good metaphor. It's going to be a cool, fun project. I never realized how much it was going to challenge me, not just on an intellectual, but on a personal level, because poker has forced me to confront parts of my personality that I didn't even realize existed because so much of you comes out at the poker table and things that didn't seem to be a big deal, didn't seem to be big weaknesses, all of a sudden they're holding you back and you say, oh wow, this is like therapy, except <laughs> except I'm actually, you know, I'm still paying money for the therapy, <laughs> except in a little, in a slightly different context. I think, you know, also so many people would just kill to be connected to some of, I mean, Eric Seidel, of course, the greatest of all time, um, but some of the players that you're connected to at this point, I think a lot of people respect not just in the world of poker, but also in the world of sort of, you know, I think all of them are looking at ways to improve their their mental game, improve their, improve their physical body, all these things. So talk a little bit about some of the things that you've been able even so far to implement into your life based on some of these relationships that you've built. Absolutely. Well, um, I my first book was about mindfulness, so it's kind of something that's always been a part of my life, but I didn't realize just how important it was at the poker table. And one of the first lessons I got from Eric was kind of the necessity of paying attention and of really being present, which is what mindfulness is about. And I've gotten to know, as you say, a lot of amazing people. I've been so lucky to have the access that I have. Um, so, you know, you have someone like Fedor Holtz, who actually now has an app, Primed Mind, which is all about kind of the mental side of the game, which is really helpful. And also it's a really wonderful reminder that you kind of something that I thought would be was helpful just in life is actually incredibly useful at the table to kind of take those moments and pause. And of course, some of the things that I had no idea existed um, are a lot of the kind of strategic ways of thinking through decisions, trying to, you know, figure out what do you know? What do you know that I know? Mm -hmm. What do you know that I know that you know that I know? And just kind of going Infinite. back and forth infinitely. And there have been a lot of wonderful players who've um, 
who've helped me with that, including you know some of the Poker Stars people. Vanessa um, Selbst lives actually very close to me um, in Brooklyn, and she uh, she's been incredibly helpful. Liv and Igor are so wonderful and friendly and just warm and welcoming. Um, and outside of the Poker Stars community, a lot of the a lot of the players who play the high rollers and who I've gotten to know through Eric um, have been just really free with their knowledge, which is kind of incredible. I mean, it's so cool to be able to text Phil Galfond and be like, hey, can you review these hands for me and see if I'm messed up? And so you and but you also see, you know, all of all of the overlap with with kind of the skills that are helpful from life and also the skills you didn't even realize could be helpful in life and then you take them from the poker table and implement them in your decisions and all of a sudden, you know, I thought that once when I was negotiating, for instance, uh, before a writing project, I thought that the editor who was assigning it was bluffing me because <laughs> I thought that I thought that I could do better, and it turned out that that was indeed the case. And I ended up, get, I ended up getting a much better contract than I otherwise would have, and that all came from kind of the abilities that I'm starting to pick up in poker. Which are also all connected with all circling back to the very beginning yeah. of the mindfulness, the awareness, yeah. the things, and the thinking like Sherlock Holmes, picking Absolutely. up nuances and things you don't know. Yeah. Well, you know, you guys, I th I'm so excited to basically like get into every single thing that you've been working on and doing. I'm so excited to see how this project, you know, comes out in the end. I think being your own sort of experiment, being the, yeah. the subject of your own experiment <laughs> is, is just fascinating. Now, for people who don't know, of course, I'll link the original video with Laura, but where can people find you? Where can they find more information about you outside? of just the podcast? Um, so I'm on Twitter at M. Konnikova and I'm on Facebook and I have a Facebook, I have a normal webpage, mariakonnikova.com. Very easy. Get it, you guys. It's going to be so cool. All right, thank you so much. I appreciate you taking the Thanks time. So I know much. you need a little break. You guys are with us here on pokernews.com.